Let's talk about 13 Reasons Why. As the starting point for a series I'm going to create called Let's Talk About Something. Um, it's going to be a place where we can talk about subjects, maybe controversial, maybe um, emotional topics that need to be talked about. Um, and I thought 13 Reasons Why would be a really, really good starting episode for this. Um, because of the theme it's getting, because of the uh, conversations behind it, there's a lot that needs to be talked about, and I felt that this was a very appropriate um, first episode. Um, I It took me a very long time to get my hack together to watch the show. Um, and I haven't finished it. I want to make that very, very clear that I haven't finished the show and I won't finish the show, but I'm going to get into that in a second. Um, my brother's girlfriend watched the show and she really liked it and she told my brother to watch the show. And he uh, had very, very strong opinions about it. And I respect my brother's opinions. Um, and if he says something isn't good and if he gives me very valid reasons why and the reasons that I agree with, I'm not going to watch a show or read a book or things like that. Um, and he really didn't like this show. Um, now, I've had friends well, at my former job who told me that I should watch the show, that it's so good. Um, I've read articles kind of warning against it, and I figured, you know what, because of the conversation surrounding this show, why not uh, write about it? Why not talk about it? Why not discuss this, this show that seems to be um, so um, tantalizing to, uh, to teenagers. I don't know if that's the right word. Um, I started watching it, and I'm not even halfway through, and it's having a very negative effect on my mental, my mental and emotional state. Um, I'm not depressed. I'm not suicidal. Um, I love my life, and I love everything about it. I'm so excited about the future. Um, I'm not suicidal or depressed. I want to make that very, very, very clear. But the show is um, causing me to have really scary thoughts, such as, what does my room say about me? What would it say about me if I was dead? Um, if I were to commit suicide, would my room be able to speak about the things that were going on inside of me? Um, uh, do my family, does my family and my friends, do they know the real me? Do I actually talk to people about the things that are going on inside? Um, and then I think kind of the scariest of all, which kind of speaks to the, um, one of the, the main themes of the show is, if I were to die, would my death have an impact on the people around me? Um, and those are big questions. I think those are very scary questions. I'm going to be 21 this year, and those are scary questions for me to be thinking about um, because my life is just so full in front of me. Um, but now imagine those thoughts in the minds of teenagers who are already having depressed or suicidal thoughts. That scares me to my core, okay? A show that creates those kind of thoughts and somebody who is really sure of herself and sure of her future and not depressed or suicidal, for the show to create thoughts like that, in me, well, it's scary, but then the fact that it could create similar thoughts in students who are more at risk for suicide, i that's not okay with me. That's not okay. Um, now, I don't want you to think that I'm speaking about the show from just um, a perspective of somebody who's never dealt with suicide. Um, there was a period of time in my life, one evening four years ago for about 45 minutes where I didn't want to wake up the next morning. Um, I seriously didn't. Um, that is a situation that I might talk about a little bit later, but it was for that evening only. Um, and it was due to a situation that was just heart-wrenching. But I will talk about that later, um, in another episode maybe. Um, but since then, I've I love my life, and I'm not depressed. Um, but also, my graduating class, the year after we graduated, so this would have been last year, we lost two fellow students in the span of two weeks to, do, to suicide. Um, it really, really rocked our class. I mean, there were kids that I didn't know personally, but I've had classes with, or I knew, or I had a friend who dated one of them, or things like that. Um, and it got to the point where, where um, 
I would ask, my friends and I who were in the same class would wonder who was going to be next. Who, was there somebody else that we were going to have to think about, worry about, pray about? Um, because suicide is scary. Um, so I want to make that very clear that I'm not, I have um, experience with suicide. Um, and I, before I get into the nitty gritty with my, my thoughts and my issues with the show, I want to make it very clear, suicide needs to be talked about. It needs to stop being so taboo, it needs to stop being kind of just whispered about. It needs to be talked about because it is the second um, cause of death for teenagers. Um, I've seen statistics for 10 to 24 and 15 to 19, but it's in that age where suicide is the second leading cause besides accidents. That's terrifying to me. That's absolutely terrifying. Um, and it needs to be talked about. Um, but I think it also needs to be talked about in terms of mental illness and depression and bullying and harassment. It needs to be talked about with all the other factors on top. Um, it needs to be talked about, but I want to make it clear that there's a difference between talking about and handling. Um, for example, 13 Reasons Why talks about suicide, but it doesn't handle suicide in uh, the sense that it doesn't, um, very clearly lay out warning signs. It doesn't very clearly lay out, um, factors. It doesn't lay out, um, uh, like, key buzzwords. It doesn't, um, it doesn't really give you good guidelines to help somebody who you know who could be suicidal, right? It just tells the story of somebody with suicide, um, and their effect on the people around them. Um, and so the show could have done a much better job at, at uh, handling suicide. And like I said, there's a difference between talking about and handling. Um, okay. My issues with 13 Reasons Why. As of right now, I have a little sticky note. Um, I have five issues with it, but I could probably go on and on and on. Um, I did write a blog post about this last night, so I will link it in the description box if you want to hear more um, of my thoughts. Um, and see more of the scientific research that I found. But kind of my biggest issue with this show is um, Anna Baker and her tapes. Um, if you're watching this video, I hope that you have seen the show because I'm not going to do a synopsis. I'm not going to give you a summary. Um, you could probably find it anywhere online. Um, but Anna Baker's main character, and she puts out tapes. Um, to people that she blames. <sighs> Keyword, blames. Um, each person on the tape is somebody that she blames for her death. Um, and I have an issue with that. I have an issue with that. Because instead of leaving a note for her parents, um, saying, I, this is why I'm dying, her parents have no closure. Um, but she blames students at school. Um, and in turn, those, that blaming um, causes some really, really nasty side effects. But you get the sense from the show that Hannah's not willing to then take the blame back for that. She's not going to say, oh, I'm sorry that happened because I did this. She's going to say it happened because you did that. Um, and I don't think that's okay. In terms of suicide, first off, when you're dead, you're dead. And I mean that in the nicest way that I can. Um, y you're dead because you feel like you can't, you committed suicide because you feel like you just can't do it anymore. I can't understand that aspect of the show because Hannah was harassed and bullied and bad things did happen to her. I won't ignore that. Um, but her blaming leads to paranoia, it leads to harassment, um, for example, the situation that stands out the clearest to me in terms of her blaming um, is there was a guy who stalked her um, and she figured it out but um, in, instead of taking it to the authorities she took the situation to her hands and told every single person who listened to the tapes to throw rocks at his window now that's going to get into another point that I have um, but she blames people. Um, there, there were guys who sexually harassed her and raped her. 
again, that's, I, I'm not condoning that. I don't want that to be, um, I don't want it to seem like I'm saying those things are okay and Hannah's the, she's the villain in this show. She's a victim and I won't, um, discount that. But as a victim, particularly in terms of suicide, it's very dangerous to blame other people. Um, and I don't even really think that that's, I don't think that's normal behavior. That doesn't feel, it doesn't line up with what you're taught in your psychology classes, um, or in health classes about suicide. It, it doesn't fit, um, it doesn't fit. Um, and I hope, I hope those of you that have first hand experience with suicide that that doesn't sit right with you because it, it sh I don't think it should. Um, I think because of Hannah's blaming, um, at least to the end of this season tragedies, um, such as one of the students, um, he's the first person on the tapes, um, and he is part of a lawsuit that Hannah's parents have filed against the school. Um, and at the end of the show, it's alluded that he's going to go commit suicide. Um, and there's also, it's also alluded that another student is about to commit a school shooting. First off, those should be huge, huge flags that something is up, something is not okay. Um, but I, I would argue that it's Hannah's blaming. It's her saying, you did this and it's your fault I'm dead, that, um, push those students over the edge um and that's not a, that's that's not okay with me that's really not okay um if she was alive and said this is this is why i'm depressed or this is why i'm having issues that would make more sense but she, she's dead and she's taken the situation into her, um by killing herself in essence she's finalizing the situation she's saying i'm gone and the only person to really blame for the fact that you died is you because you're the one that actually did it. And again, I'm trying to be as sensitive as I can, but you have to think about this logically in terms of how would it actually play out in real life, right? Um, and one of the things that I've been thinking about, and this kind of applies to all of the different points that I have, but how would the, the situation of 13 Reasons Why, if that were to play out in a normal everyday school, um, you would think that something horrible was going on. You would, all of the students would probably be evaluated. Um, I understand this is a fictitious story, but in terms of suicide and harassment and bullying, you have to think about it in terms of real life effects. Does it actually affect other people? Um, how would real people respond to a similar situation? And I think, I, I think being blamed for somebody else's death by the dead person? I don't think that happens. Um, and I also have an issue with the fact that Hannah blackmails every single person. You might not see it as blackmail, but at the very, very essence of it, she blackmails every student that's on the tape. Um, because each person that receives a set of tapes is told to listen to all of them and then pass it on to the next person, the next consecutive person. Um, and they're told that if they don't, there's another set of tapes, another identical set of tapes that will be released to the public and to the authorities, um, if it's not followed through. That's not okay. Like, you're dead. You can't blackmail people, first off, because you're dead and you can't control the situation anymore. Like, duh. But also, you're dead. You're dead. I'm sorry, but... Once you die, you relinquish all control of a situation. You relinquish all effect on a situation. And if you think that you have the power to control a situation after you die, I'm sorry, but you're delusional. <laughs> That's kind of the fact of the matter. Um, I could keep rambling about that one, but my second point is the lack of perspective in this show. Um, and that kind of breaks down into two parts. Um, the first part is how the parents versus the school. 
Um, so what I mean by that is the fact um, that these tapes are given to the students. And Hannah's parents don't know why she died. They don't know anything about it. Um, and at one point, um, I think it's Hannah's mother comments to um, the present person with the tapes and says, I can't believe she didn't leave a suicide note. And uh, it's like the, the the person that she's talking to, the guy, finally realizes that the tapes were her suicide note and he decides not to tell the mom about that. I have a problem with that because I think a parent's grief should be more paramount than a student's reputation. Um, and I, I want to think of it this way. If you were a parent who lost a child to suicide and you found out that there were tapes from your child passed around to students at your school but nothing was left for you, that would be horrible. But then to find out that the students were told not to tell anybody that would be heartbreak. Like, that would add insult to injury. The fact that Hannah couldn't trust her parents to tell them what was going on, that she couldn't leave a note for them. I, I hope that teenagers' relationships with their parents aren't that bad. Um, I don't tell my parents everything, but I'm almost 21. I only live with them because I'm paying for college. Um, but the moment I graduate, I'll be moving out. So at that point, I no longer really have to tell them anything. Um, but I, I hope that teenagers have a relationship with their parents where they can tell them if something bad happened, if they were bullied, if they were harassed. Um, because in reality, and let me make this very clear to you, high schoolers, you can't fix everything. You're not invincible. You don't have the power to um, fix a harassment situation. You can't you can't address harassment with revenge harassment. That's not how this works. And so the pe the proper people who can get involved to help the situation for you are adults. Sometimes you have to tell people, people who can actually handle the situation. Um, but I have an issue with that, with the student's lack of perspective, with the lack of, of feeling like their reputations are more important than Hannah's parents. Um, that I feel like that gives a very, very bad representation to teenagers watching this um, because they think that it's possible that they could think that parents and counselors and other authorities are not going to help them, that they're not going to help solve the situation, that they're not going to be beneficial to taking care of a problem. Um, they're just going to get in the way or they're not going to do what they should um, and I think that's really 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 unhealthy because Parents and authorities and counselors have been in the same situation. They've been through high school They've probably dealt with similar things. And I mean, I've never really been bullied um, I know high school is tough, but I've never been bullied. I've never really experienced harassment but I have a cousin who has and he's gotten people involved who can help the situation because adults help um, my second point with this that really causes a problem for me is the lack of perspective regarding Hannah's death. Now, I kind of already touched on this, but Hannah's dead, so she really, in all reality, no longer has any control on the situation. Um, but it seems that the students who are given these tapes don't understand that, um, and they feel like they have no, um... Oh, what's the word? They have no choice but to do as Hannah says. And there was one student, I think it's Marcus, if you know the show, you know who I'm talking about, but in one episode he says, um, why are you doing this? She's dead. Like, you don't have to do this. Um, and now he does go on to be part of the tapes, but what he said was, I almost stood up and clapped because that's how I've been feeling. If she's dead, she's not going to know if nobody listens to the tape. She's not going to know. Um, no, she's not going to know if nobody listens to the tapes, and she won't know if the second set of tapes is released. She's dead. She has no idea. She's D-E-A-D. -E she's dead. Um, but 
Marcus, when he said that, it shut down like he's delusional, that he's stupid, that he has no idea of what's going on. And I feel like that's really, really sad because, again, it presents the perspective that when you're dead, you can still control things. You can still um, have an impact on other people. And that's a really dangerous way of thinking. Um, and it could create some really, really bad situations in real life. Um, and that's something that I don't want to see happen. Because um, suicide hurts my heart. <laughs> um, and I don't want to see a situation similar to this show be replicated in real life thinking it's okay. Um, my third point, and this is kind of where my brother and I agree. I mean, we agree a lot of these, on a lot of these, but um, number three was my brother's biggest issue with the show. And on a lot of the articles that I've read about it, it's a lot of the counselors and authorities and professionals issue with the show. It trivializes suicide and it glamorizes bullying and revenge harassment. Um, now, I know that it's kind of... Saying 13 reasons why trivializes suicide might feel a little backwards, but please hear me out. Um, this show focuses... it talks about a student suicide but the vast majority of the show doesn't focus on her suicide. In fact, it focuses on bullying, which I think is very important. It shows the effects of bullying on people, which need, it needs to be talked about. Um, but I would say that 85% of the show is focused on bullying and harassment. Um, and so it takes away from the point of the show, which is suicide, until the very, very final episode. And it talks about bullying, how she was bullied, how she was sexually harassed. Um, which again, are very important things that a lot of teenagers deal with. Now, I and a lot of the, my friends have never experienced that. We've gone to school where we've never, where uh, we ourselves have never experienced that. But we have, I have a friend at church who dropped out of our school and started doing school online because of how she was bullied. Um, and then she continued to be um, cyber bullied. I mean, she's, she has a strong head on her shoulders, um, and it's never really caused any issues with her, besides, um, I think, things that she's always had, but I I don't have the ability to disclose that. Um, so bullying does exist. Harassment does exist. I'm not trying to say it doesn't. But the show glamorizes bullying and revenge um, harassment because people are, are holding so close to Hannah's Hannah's a word, and they believe that because she's dead, we have to respect her word, we have to respect um, the things that she says, we have to respect the dead, and so therefore we have to do as she says, particularly in regards to the student where they throw rocks at his window. I have an issue with that because it perpetuates revenge harassment, right? Again, instead of taking that situation to the authorities, Hannah tells everybody who listens to the show, or listen to the tape, to throw rocks at his window. Um, and then, the main guy, Jason, um, not Jason, Clay, um, he, instead of throwing a rock at this guy's window, he takes a, a picture from while he's changing and sends it to the school. That's not okay, because that further perpetuates harassment, that further perpetuates bullying. Um, and he, you begin to see his action as okay, because since he had a crush on Hannah, he's seeking revenge for her reputation and wants to continue to honor her. I'm a hopeless romantic, so part of me finds that really sweet, but it, it, it's... The logical part of me is, like, that's not okay. That's He could get in as just as much trouble as everybody else, or even more. Um... And throughout the, the episodes, at least as many as I've watched, um, every single person that listens to the tapes um, does their very best to just pass it on and not think about it and, and hope that it's not going to get um, out. But then when the tapes get to Clay, and because he had a crush on Hannah, he takes matters into his own hands, and at times, 
harasses people. Um, his behavior gets more and more um, aggressive, I would say, um, and it encourages bullying and harassment. Um, which I have a very, very big issue with. Um, number four, my fourth point, um, kind of ties in to number five, but it's a very graphic depiction of suicide. Now, that's in the final episode, and I, as of right now, will not be finishing the show. I can't. Um, I watched one episode yesterday, and when I was done, I just, I felt this really dark cloud just sitting over my entire body, my entire being, my entire, like, mind, heart, soul, and just everything. And I, I can't put myself through that. Um, the show, do you ever watch a movie and it just feels, um, I don't want to say evil because that's too strong, but it just feels too dark and you just have to decide to stop watching it? That's how this show feels for me, um, and I won't be watching the final episode, uh, partly because of the graphic suicide, um, and I'm a very, very sensitive person, and so that show would be very difficult, um, that would cause me a lot of emotional distress to watch that, that particular episode, um, but I've been reading a lot of articles about the show, um, and a lot of professionals are saying that the very graphic depiction of suicide is likely to encourage other students who have suicidal thoughts or are suicidal to in to follow through with their plan to commit suicide. And to me, if professionals are saying that, that should be a red flag right there. Um, no amount of warning, no amount of trigger warning, no amount of like professional guidance. Um, is going to save people who watch that show from having those thoughts or agreeing that that's probably the right thing to do. And what frustrates me, now I'm not a professional, um, I don't plan on getting my degree focusing on suicide prevention, um, but I have studied suicide in my psychology classes. Um, and I, I, I feel like this is just dangerous. It's very, very dangerous. Why would you set, um, why would you put something out there that has the possibility of encouraging more suicide, knowing that the risk is out there? Um, I think that one life, the risk of saving, uh, rather, the risk of causing one life to commit suicide should be far greater than any, um, artistic desire. Do you know what I mean? Um, I feel like life should be of higher, higher value than staying true to the um, original material. If you're writing something that pertains to teenagers um, and the teenagers um, that are watching this and they have suicidal thoughts and you're showing a scene that could encourage suicide, I think that you need to really really evaluate what it is that you're trying to do with this show. You know what I mean? Um, and I... Yeah. That's just a massive, massive, massive not... That's a really, really big red flag to me that the show does that. Um, and I highly recommend um, that if you have suicidal thoughts or if you are suicidal and you f you want to watch the show I really recommend having a friend with you um, because I don't know you but I care about you I don't know you but I love you I don't know you and I want to see you live because your life is so incredible and I know it might hurt right now but you are worthy of living every single person is and the situation that you might be in right now might be dark, it might feel horrible, it might feel like it's never ending, but there are people out there that want to help you, that want to love you, that want to care about you. Um, and, and suicide is not the answer. Really, it's not. Um, and 
I, I hope you know that. Um, my final point for right now is the effect that this show has on teens. Um, there are, there are a lot of issues that this show could have. Um, I did some research last night, and as of right now, there are no statistics indicating any co copycat suicides after the show has been released. And for those of you that, that don't know that term, that's basically um, suicides that happen after another one. Um, so after Marilyn Monroe committed suicide, there was a cluster of suicides um, directly after that. Um, and after Kurt Cobain, and there's probably a couple after Robin Williams, um, and, and so on and so forth, particularly um, with celebrities. Um, and I would wager that, um, the two suicides that my class has experienced, because so close in proximity, um, the last one, the second one was a copycat, um, a copycat suicides, um, they're dangerous, particularly particularly if there is one person who um, students know who has committed suicide, those that um, are depressed are more likely to follow suit. And I think the show has the potential to create some really really bad copycat situations. Um, like I said, that there there are no current statistics um, that show any data to support that. Um, but a lot of professionals are worried um, that they're going to have to pick up a lot of the pieces from this show. Um, and they're worried that a lot of kids are going to commit suicide after watching the show, which is a fear that I, I share. Um, like I said, a suicide hurts my heart. <laughs> it really does. Um, and I don't want anybody to think that because they watch the show that it's okay. Um, the other issue, well, I, yeah. Along that same line of effect on teens, um, the show presents two really startling um, illustrations. The first one, that counselors aren't there to help, um, that they're only going to make a mess of things that you can't trust them um, and you really only only need to see that in the way that the counselors handle Hannah after she was raped um, to get that that understanding um, which I never really had any issues to talk about with a school counselor um, but I know that there are kids that have um, and counselors are there to help um, they've been in high school they know kind of the issues or at least try to stay um, up to date with all of the issues facing their, their students. Um, and they they want to help um, in any situation, with every situation, be it harassment, bullying, suicide, um, sexual assault, sexual harassment, anything like that. Um, and so are law enforcement. Um, they want to help, they want to keep you safe. Um, but the other thing that I think is kind of more startling um, than anything is that the show presents the idea that suicide is a quick, not quick, but a easy way out or is actually an option. Um, the articles that I've read um, about the suicide scene say that they wanted to create the scene to show um, people dealing with suicide thoughts that it's not always quick and painless and easy. Um, there is a lot of suffering involved, um, which I give them a little bit of credit for that, that they wanted to create something that was realistic. Um, so yes, I can understand what they were saying by that, but um, Suicide, I don't think, is an option, only because I believe that every single person is capable um, and they're strong. Um, 
I've been through some situations where I felt like I just couldn't handle it mentally or emotionally or anything. Um, but I don't want to see anybody die. I don't want to see anybody commit suicide. Um, and I feel like the show really does a bad job of convincing students not to. Um, and the other, um, the show is on Netflix, and all of the episodes are on Netflix, and you can watch them all at once, and I don't think that's a good thing, because it's a lot, each episode is a lot to emotionally take in, and so students could watch the entire, um, show in one evening, and have all of these emotional things going on in their head, um, and you need, you need to have something to verbally, or not even verbally, but you need to have time to process, um, if they really wanted this show to be watched by teens, I would have recommended doing it, um, having an episode a week so they would have had time to talk about it with their parents or with their friends or, or process it before the next one came out. Um, like I said, it's a lot. It is a lot. Um, the other thing is it does show very graphic depictions of sexual harassment, of rape, um, there's even a scene of masturbation, um, there's homosexual kissing, um, the language is vulgar, um, and it's rated mature. Like I said, I'm going to be 21, um, and this show, it felt very crass at times. Um, I, when I was writing my blog last night, I compared it to Broadchurch, um, which is a BBC show with David Tennant, which is, I really like the show, um, but I think they handled... Um, death, and they handled um, homosexuality and language um, gently and sensitively. And this show just felt very um, frank, but not in a thought-out way. Um, crass, I feel, is the best way to put it. Um, and it was a lot for me to take in. I said I can handle a lot. Broad Church is a lot. Second, the second season of that show is a lot. Um, but this show, it's way too much. It's way too much. Um, and if you um, have teenagers that are watching it, I highly recommend that you watch it with them um, because it is labeled TV mature. Um, This is not a show that should be watched alone. Um, yeah. I won't even get into the topic of does it actually represent high school? Does it actually represent student bodies? Does it actually represent anything like that? And I'm going to say, uh, like I said, I won't go into that. <laughs> that opens up a whole other topic. Um, now... I met my mom's daughter in the sense that if she's reading a book and she doesn't like the character, she won't finish the book. Um, and besides the issues that I've listed for you, I can't stand the characters. I think they're all whiny. I think they're all um, disillusioned. I think they're all stupid. Um, and I can't stand any of them. I can't stand any of them. Um, the, the character that I'm most likely to like would be Clay Jensen who is the person who, who has the tapes the majority of the show, um, but I can't stand his character arc. I I feel bad for him, um, but I can't stand him. Um, and so I won't be finishing the show because of the characters. Um, if you've finished the show, I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, this is a show that I think should stimulate conversation. Um, it's It started a conversation on suicide, but it needs to be steered away from from the glamorized elements of the show, it needs to be brought back to the fundamental importance of preventing suicide. It needs to, the conversation needs to um, focus on prevention, it needs to focus on the warning signs, it needs to focus on help, it needs to focus on things that can actually um, help diminish the suicide rates. Um, and this show is not 
not not meeting that. It's not meeting that expectation. Um, like I said, if you've watched the show, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, it does need to be talked about. Um, but yeah, um, I don't like the show, and I don't recommend it to anybody. Um, but if you or anyone you know is um, suicidal or experiencing suicidal thoughts or exhibiting any of the warning signs, um, please call the suicide prevention hotline. I will um, include the number here for you. Um, they're open 24 hours. You can call them at any time. You can even chat with them online if you're in a situation where you're having um, intensive suicidal thoughts and you can't talk on the phone. Um, and they are more than willing to help you. Um, please take advantage of that. Or even if you just need to re reach out to somebody to talk to, um, my email is, um, I will link that in the description box as well. If you just need somebody to talk to, I am here. Um, so that's all for today, and I will see you later.